Okay. I've received several comments on my most recent post regarding Venom Fang X's last uh, video, Intelligent Design and Plasticine Part 5, A Math Problem. I think I probably just didn't make myself clear enough, so I'm going to actually break down his argument into the three parts, and then a fourth kind of subpart that has to do with a, a false limit that he puts on his claim and or tries to put on the rebuttals to his claim. Number one, humans are complex. They are. There's no argument there. Number two, the complexity of humans can be given a numerical value. He gives us the numerical value of one trillion to ten trillion parts. I'll come back to complexity in a second because that doesn't work. You can't add it. You can't put a numerical value on the complexity of a thing by just counting up its parts. And then he claims that this complexity cannot be explained via the evolutionary model or the theory of evolution. Yeah, we'll come back to that too. And finally, let's frame this false limit that he tries to impose on those like me who would refute him. He says we can't use genetics. Wrong. We have to use genetics because, well, it's the organism's genome that defines how that organism develops. The genetics and the genome are the instructions for how an organism works. So yes, we can use genetics. We have to because to exclude it, you're excluding a major part of the nature of organisms. You're basically saying that, hey, I want you to explain to me how the heart works, but you can't tell me how muscles work. You can't do that deal with part two, because part one I, I concede. Complexity. What is it? Complexity is an emergent property of simpler underlying processes. Simple as that. How complex a thing is depends on many things. Um, it can depend on how many parts are involved in it, but not necessarily, especially if many of those parts are uh, the same. It can depend on how many processes go into developing that complexity. Uh, with organisms such as ourselves, there's quite a few processes that are involved in that. But I want to give an example of a snowflake here. The snowflakes are complex. They're complex collections of water molecules in a frozen state. They develop that complexity through emergence from a natural and very simple property of water. Primarily it's uh, morphology, the shape of the water molecule, the bonding that water molecules have amongst each other, etc. So very basic principles, very basic process, develops extraordinarily complex shapes that we see in snowflakes. Same goes with gravity. Galaxies are very complex shapes, they're very complex structures that complexity is a direct emergence of the process of gravity, how gravity works. So we have a direct line from a simple process to complexity without any problem explaining it with natural reasons. The same works for humans. We are complex. We are the complex emergent structures of the evolutionary process. And to speak also about complexity, he was saying we change, we have complexity of 1 trillion to 10 trillion. How does that occur over 2 billion years? Even though the actual number would be closer to 4 billion, but let's go with 2 billion. Well, actually, we go from a complexity of 1 to a complexity of 10 trillion in 18 years, give or take. Some people more than others. I would be one of those kind of a big guy here. So in 18 years, I grow in, I've grown in, ex, well, actually I'm 35 now, but up to the adult age, I grew in complexity enormously in 18 years. Why is it then so much more difficult to accept 2 billion years from 18? The idea is the same. You can directly equate 
uh, the fertilization of a human egg to an adult at 18, an increase in complexity of 10 trillion to a single cell organism 2 billion years ago to us now. Also covering a complexity of 10, billion, 10 trillion parts. So that's where his argument fails because he doesn't understand what complexity is. He tries to put a number on complexity, which is basically just the number of parts. I mean, why doesn't he just go on down and count every single molecule in the organism? Then you'd have a very large number. It might even sound like a better argument, but it wouldn't be. In my last video, I talked about numbers. I was talking about mutation. Mutations do occur, period. We know they occur. We can measure them. We see them. So going back to what I said, I put these numbers on there to let you people know. Human mutation values is about 2.5 times 10 to the negative eighth. Guys don't like hearing the numbers. That's fine. That range is about 150 base pair mutations in every, po every generation, every single one of us. Actual mutations, because mutations, there are many different types. If it's a larger mutation, like say the moving of a gene within the chromosome, then you would be uh, you could be moving far more than just 150 base pairs, so it averages out. So I was trying to put the numbers on there, and I wanted to show that if you take the likelihood of mutations occurring over the last four billion years, but let's say two billion years, it's still about 10 to the 16th mutations, more mutations than there are base pairs in our genome. 1% of those would be beneficial mutations. This is based on actual numbers that we've been able to know about because we can measure them. And, and to counter some people who say, oh, all mutations are harmful, 95% of mutations do absolutely nothing. They have no damage, no deleterious effects, no beneficial effects. They're completely benign. They don't do a thing. Of those that are left, about 4% may be harmful, while, like I said, about 1% they are beneficial. So, to my critics, if you don't understand this stuff, that's okay. I can, under, I can see where you're coming from. I've studied this stuff for years. I originally majored in physics and chemistry when I went to college the first time. I'm back in college now because I want to major in biology. Great things out there about the genetics. Just the other day on sciencedaily.com, this was posted November 20th, 2008. Darwin was right about how evolution can affect whole groups. It's an article to, talking about and how evolution would work with social insects, like ants. Venomfang X claims that no new structures have ever been evolved. Well, there's a lizard called Italian wall lizards that were introduced uh, to a tiny island off the coast of Croatia. They evolved. They've actually developed new structures in their digestive tract to allow them to eat different, eat and digest different food items than they originally would have uh, sustained on. They developed sequel valves. It's a muscle valve between the small and the large intestines. They didn't have this before introduction to the island. They developed it thereafter because they went from having a more omnivorous lifestyle, eating several eaten insects, to having a more uh, herbivore lifestyle, eating primarily plants. So they need to retain the food in their gut longer to absorb more nutrients from it. They evolved. They developed brand new structures for this. So, hey, kind of counter some of his claims there.